This conference will now be recorded. Okay, welcome to the What You Need to Know webinar. I am Candice Schottenlor, a health educator with the Community Engagement Team with the Florida Department of Health here in Miami-Dade County. I also have my colleagues Brianna McDaniel and Robert Ward from the Community Engagement Team to also help assist with today's webinar. And if you have any questions, um, make sure um, to add them in the chat box. If you're having any issues um, or any questions related to the webinar, you can go ahead and add them there. And just a few other reminders before we get started. Um, please know that you have the capability, you could have your camera on or off. And you also have the option to mute and unmute your microphone um, for the Q&A. And while you're not speaking, please just as a reminder to keep yourself muted as the presenter is presenting. And today you will learn about how tobacco use during pregnancy and secondhand smoke are harmful to the health of both the mother and the baby. And today, Takia Smith will be presenting to you on this topic. She is a senior health educator with the Florida Department of Health in Miami-Dade County and is a part of the Tobacco Prevention and Control Program. So without further ado, I will pass it on to Takia. Thank you, Candice. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll go ahead and start this webinar. Let's see, make sure. All right. So as Candice mentioned, I will be presenting on tobacco and pregnancy and what you need to know. And yes, I am a senior health educator with the Florida Department of Health in Miami-Dade County, um, working with the Office of Community Health and Planning for the Tobacco Prevention and Control Program. So today we'll be learning about the Tobacco Prevention and Control Program initiatives, as well as recognizing the harms of tobacco use and its impact on pregnancy discuss the common myths about quitting and pregnancy, as well as discuss free cessation resources and tools available. Um, and again, if you have any questions during this presentation, as our host mentioned, please place them in the chat box and I will answer your questions at the end. So the Tobacco Prevention and Control Program at the Florida Department of Health in Miami-Dade County is funded through a grant from Tobacco Free Florida. The program focuses on improving the health of Miami-Dade County residents through policy and system change through four main goals and program components. The first one is prevent initiation of tobacco use among youth and young adults. So you'll see the point of sale initiative. It primarily focuses on addressing the marketing and access to cigarettes, electronic nicotine delivery systems, and other tobacco products in convenience stores, gas stations, pharmacies, and other retail outlets. The young adult intervention area focuses on assisting state universities, state colleges, private colleges, universities, and vocational technical schools with creating tobacco-free environments. We also have here the Eliminate Secondhand Smoke Exposure, which we have the Smoke-Free Multi-Unit Housing Initiative, which focuses on creating policy change to reduce secondhand smoke exposure in apartments and condominiums as well as promote cessation from tobacco use. We usually do that through the Tobacco-Free Worksites Initiative, which encourages employers to create comprehensive tobacco-free grounds policies and cover the seven FDA-recommended medications as a part of employee cessation benefits. Well, also within our program, we help with the student working against tobacco, also known as SWAT, and our tobacco-free work group of Miami-Dade County with the consortium of Miami or Healthier Miami-Dade. So tobacco. Tobacco use is number one cause of preventable death in the United States and around the world. Tobacco killed 100 million people worldwide in the 20th century. And if current trends continue, it will kill 1 billion people in the 21st century. Every year, tobacco kills more than 480,000 Americans and nearly 6 million people worldwide. The vast majority started smoking as children. Here in Florida, 32,300 die every year from smoking. And although it's not on the slide, I would like to mention that that number of deaths does not include those who um, had secondhand smoke. 
So why is tobacco harmful? Cigarette smokes, of course. It contains more than 7,000 chemicals, at least 250, 250 are toxic and 70 are known to cause cancer. Nicotine, a chemical present in tobacco is highly addictive and harmful. For every person who dies from tobacco use, at least 30 people live with a debilitating smoke-related illness. So we're here today to learn about smoking and pregnancy. Smoking during pregnancy is one of the most modifiable risk factors for poor birth outcomes. In the next few slides, I will discuss how maternal tobacco use during pregnancy has been linked to a host of negative infant and child health outcomes. If you smoke while you're pregnant, you will increase the risk of health outcomes like the health problems for developing babies, as you see on this slide. This includes lowering the amount of oxygen and nourishment to a developing baby, increase the baby's heart rate, risk of a miscarriage or stillbirth, preterm birth, or low birth weights. Long-term long -term harms and effects due from smoking during and after pregnancy also increases the risk of sudden infant health death syndromes, also known as SIDS. Your baby could be born too small and could have breathing and other health problems. These babies are three times more likely to be born early, can be born with birth defects of the mouth and lip, and your baby could have brain dysfunction and mental retardation. Looking at this graph, Miami-Dade rates of smoking while pregnant is a lot lower than overall Florida. In 2019, the rate was 0.5%. That is one in 200 women smoked during pregnancy within Miami-Dade County. But also, as you can see on this chart, from 2018, the number is growing for 2019, the number increased. That's something we need to look out for. Something to think about is secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke is smoke you breathe in from someone else burning tobacco products, such as cigarettes, cigars, pipes, and other tobacco products. There is no risk-free level of secondhand smoke exposure. Even brief exposure can be harmful to health. Secondhand smoke is dangerous for the mother and their baby. If the mother is exposed to secondhand smoke, they are at a risk of having lung cancer. Heart disease, chronic lung disease increases. Also, they're at risk of blood clots that can lead to heart attacks and stroke increases. Babies and children exposed to secondhand smoke are at a risk for health problems like bronchitis, which is the inflammation in the bronchial tubes that carry air to and from the baby's lungs, and it can cause coughing and shortness of breath. Um, also at risk of having pneumonia, which is an infection in the lungs, and as well as asthma, which is a health condition that affects the body's airways and can cause breathing problems. And as, as you also can see there, baby can also be a risk of having cognitive developmental um, problems as well. I'm not sure if you're aware, but a baby can also have ear infections um, due to this, which all these types of problems and infections will lead the child to suffer from more frequent hospitalization, causing physical hardship for them and financial hardship on their families. The unborn baby is more likely to have infections unborn baby is more likely to have other problems. Third hand smoke. Many don't really think about third hand smoke. However, it is a large, it is a huge issue. Within third hand smoke, it's what's left behind when someone smokes. It's what you smell on things like your clothes, your furniture, carpet, um, it's, with, it's within our walls, as well as on your skin and your hair. It's basically the smoke left behind, um, left in these items. The smoke sticks to these things and they build up over time and it's hard to remove. Third hand smoke is why like opening a window or a door in another room isn't enough to protect somebody from the smoke. Third hand smoke contains more than 250 chemicals and is harmful to the pregnant women, babies and their children. 
Babies and children can be exposed to these chemicals when they breathe in the third hand smoke or when they touch or put any of these items into their mouths. And they're more, that's how they're likely to be exposed to third hand smoke. Researchers are currently working on finding out if third hand smoke can cause cancer or any other serious health issues. The growing issue now when you think about tobacco and nicotine is e-cigarettes. Electronic cigarettes contain liquid, typically includes nicotine, flavorings, and other chemicals. They come in a variety of different shapes and sizes, and they're also known as e-cigs, e-hookahs, vapes, vape pens, and many other names follow. Just like regular cigarettes, you can become addicted to e-cigarettes. Although the aerosol of the e-cigarettes generally have fewer harmful substances than cigarette smoke, e-cigarettes and other products containing nicotine are not safe to use during pregnancy. Nicotine is a health danger for pregnant women and developing babies and can damage a developing baby's brains and lungs. Also, some of the flavorings used in e-cigarettes may be harmful to that child. Now, I kind of want to just go over a couple of myths and facts so um, I can dispute them. <laughs> so a myth that maybe some pregnant mothers have probably asked, I'm pregnant and have been smoking, so there's no point in stopping now. Fact, quitting smoking at any stage of your pregnancy has health benefits for you and your baby. Even after just one day of not smoking, your baby will get more oxygen. This will help your baby's lungs develop well. Quitting now also lowers your chances of having a baby with low birth weight. Quitting smoking, the myth, quitting smoking will be too stressful on my baby. Fact, quitting smoking doesn't put extra stress on your baby. It's one of the best things that you can do for your health and your baby's health during pregnancy and after the baby is born. By quitting smoking now, you'll be protecting your infant from the dangers of secondhand smoke, as well as reducing the risk of sudden infant death syndrome. Some may ask, smoking fewer cigarettes or switching to e-cigarettes during pregnancy is okay. I'll give you the fact. Quitting smoking doesn't put extra stress on your baby. It's one of the best things that, oh, sorry, <laughs> myth. Smoking fewer cigarettes or switching to e-cigarettes during pregnancy is okay. Fact, there is no safe amount of smoking. Every puff or cigarette releases harmful chemicals that will reach your babies and affect your health too. E-cigarettes are also not harmless. Although there is so much to learn about e-cigarettes, pregnant women would not use them. The nicotine in e-cigarettes is harmful for the de de developing baby. Smoking relaxes me and being relaxed is better for me and my baby. Fact, smoking may make you feel calmer, it hurts your body way more than it helps. The relaxed feeling is only temporary and whatever is causing your stress will likely return. Smoking speeds up your heart rate and increases your blood pressure. It also increases the carbon monoxide in your bloodstream, which means your baby gets less oxygen. Now keep in mind, no amount of smoking is safe. Quitting is the best things you can do for yourself and your baby. Your doctor or other healthcare providers can help you develop a plan to stop smoking. E-cigarette use during pregnancy is unsafe. E-cigarettes are not approved by the FDA to help smokers quit. And e-cigarettes contain nicotine, which can damage a baby's developing brain and lungs. Pregnant women who smoke and locate your Healthy Star service area by going to HealthyStarFlorida.com. For tobacco users um, or anyone looking for proven effective ways to quit, the best plan is to talk to their healthcare providers and to seek form any form of evidence-based resources like through Tobacco Free Florida, as well as seeking out your area health education centers. I would like to mention if you are interested in helping your community to raise awareness about the risk of smoking during pregnancy and benefits of quitting, you can get involved with the Consortium for a Healthier Miami-Dade Tobacco-Free Work Group, 
and the committee meets bi-monthly the last Monday of the month. And due to the pandemic, we are currently meeting virtually. You can go ahead and visit healthmiamidade.org if you'd like to learn more about the Consortium for a Healthier Miami Dade and the other committees as well. You can also follow any of the social media handles um, following the Consortium pages. Now here are some cessation resources if you like. Um, you can, as you're seeing here on this slide, you have the Tobacco Free Florida, TFF Put Your Way, as well as Tobacco Free Worksites Toolkit, um, my AHAC cessation guide, guidance toolkits. Um, these resources are here and available. And if you need them, I can go ahead and put them inside the chat box for you. And here are the references for my presentation. If you have any questions, um, if they're in the chat box, I'll be happy to answer any of them. Thank you all for having me. Thank you so much, Takiya, for that very insightful and resourceful presentation. And so now um, we do have a few questions that um, that were submitted prior um, to registering. So we will go ahead and begin that discussion. I'll hand it over to Robert. Thank you, Candice, and thank you, Takiya, for that great presentation. We really appreciate it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and ask. We have a few questions here that were submitted by the audience. The first mm -hmm. question is, um, they were just wondering if you could elaborate on how tobacco use affects breastfeeding. Um, they really want like an in-depth answer if that's possible. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I actually like that question. Um, so basically, tobacco or e-cigarettes while breastfeeding can allow nicotine and harmful chemicals to pass from the mother to the infant the breast milk. Mothers who usually who use tobacco or e-cigarettes should be encouraged to quit, of course. Um, but I would like to say that breastfeeding does provide numerous health benefits and breast milk remains the recommended food for an infant. Yet there are studies that show that women who do smoke are more likely to have lower milk supply and those who do breastfeed tend to wean their babies earlier than women who do not smoke. So hopefully that answers um, their question. Yes, it does. Thank you. And building on that question, um, the second question I asked, if the mo mother smokes during pregnancy, uh, what exactly are the effects on the baby? I know you already touched on that, but how long will they be affected, both the mother and the baby? Yeah. Uh, so as I kind of mentioned in the presentation, smoking during pregnancy can affect the fetus or the baby. For instance, um, reduced oxygen supply can result in an infant developing uh, numerous disabilities uh, like uh, congenital heart defects, autism, ADHD, seizures, and a lot of these conditions are long-term specialized care, which they'll need medications, physical therapy, behavioral therapy, and sometimes they may have to have home modifications. It can also cause, uh, as I mentioned, acute lower respiratory infections such as bronchitis, pneumonia and in the infants and within the younger children. This includes like coughing, uh, wheezing and breathlessness. And also I wanted to note that, I think I mentioned it as well, that um, the baby can be stunted, um, their growth can be stunted during, um, if the mother smokes during pregnancy. So this child will have low weight, a low birth weight uh, and a lot of health problems in the long run. And a lot of these conditions, um, it can um, lead to, uh, um, like I mentioned, SIDS, for example. And these are some really dangerous effects that can affect the baby, the mother, and the family in the long run. Gotcha. Thank you, uh, Takia. Excuse me. Uh, so that's all the questions we had submitted. I do not see any more in the chat box. So at this point, I'm going to hand it back over to Candice. Thank you so much, Robert, and thank you, Takiya, for answering their questions. Very important information. If anybody has um, any questions, you still have some time to add it in the chat box. I will go ahead and share a few um, upcoming events that we have. On September 30th at 10 a.m., we have the Cholesterol Basics presentation, and this presentation will help you understand cholesterol and how it can affect your health risk 
factors in how to improve your cholesterol levels. And then we also wanted to share with you on Friday, October 2nd, at 10 a.m., we will present the health equity in 2020. What does this mean and why does it matter in the age of COVID-19? Uh, this virtual webinar will have two presenters, Dr. Marissa Levine and Liz Spiro-Huss, and they will be discussing different aspects you know, of health disparities and looking at it from a health equity lens and leadership view. And so if you are interested, we will share these links in the chat box. And also as a reminder, as Takia shared, uh, visit healthymiamiday.org. This is where you can learn more to get involved um, as part of the tobacco-free work group. And also wanted to share that um, Takia and the Tobacco Prevention and Control Program also participate in the Healthy Baby Task Force, really working on these um, efforts with the pregnant mothers and families. And I do see um, one other question in the chat box here. Takia says, do you think third-hand smoke is just as dangerous for babies who breastfeed since they are in their mother's arm and near her clothes? I do. So um, kind of like what I mentioned earlier about third-hand smoke, uh, the child's the third hand smoke still has the chemicals within it. Let's say 200, 250 or so chemicals um, still exist within those third hand smokes. So if the baby is around an item, they can, you know, usually babies have this fixation of putting things in their mouth. So let's say like they're about to buy a toy that the mother was smoking by and that child, that, um, child puts that toy in their mouth. That's basically putting the chemicals with them. So I would say that if the mother can definitely seek help in quitting, um, so your child won't be in any harm's way of that third-hand smoke and even second-hand smoke, um, even if, let's say if they're smoking in another room, but the door is still open or so. So definitely, I will say third-hand smoke is dangerous for the baby as well as others that are in that household. Thank you. And also to build off of that, they are asking, um, so if so, um, would you recommend the mother to shower before feeding her baby um, after she ha was smoking? I would say that um, even if the mother showers or so, most likely it was still on the mother's clothes or so. So, I mean, at the end of the day, the third hand smoke is still within that area, within the um, within the walls or within that specific spot that she was probably smoking at. Um, again, I mean, definitely I hope that mother would seek help in quitting so her children and her babies are not affected by um, the tobacco and nicotine that's in the air. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I am not seeing any other questions um, in the chat box. Um, they're thankful for your response. And so at this time, if there's no other questions, uh, this webinar has been completed and we will also be sharing a follow-up email that includes the evaluation. Um, so we definitely value your feedback uh, for future and upcoming events. Thank you all so much for joining us and have a great rest of the day and a wonderful weekend. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Good presentation.